Welcome to the Sixth Grade Podcast. Today I'm joined by Ms. Brown and Ms. Canario, and we're going to talk about the Earth, Sun, and Moon relationship. Today we're talking about days and seasons, and the two standards that, that we're going to be quizzing on this Friday is distinguish among a day, lunar cycle, and year based on movements of the Earth, Sun, and Moon. The lunar cycle we've kind of taken out because we're going to do that more when we hit the Moon phases. Then the second standard says use a diagram that shows the positions of the Earth and Sun to explain the four seasons. The essential question is, how does the movement of the sun, moon, and earth affect us? Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is Earth's orbit. We don't just sit still in space. We, we move around the sun, and we move around the sun, and we call that a revolution. It, our orbit is an ellipse. That just means it's an elongated circle. It means it's, it's not a perfect circle. It's kind of stretched out on the ends. Now, the difference between rotation and revolution is pretty simple. Ro rotation means Earth is spinning on its axis. Now, an axis just is an imaginary line that runs from pole to pole. Now, the spinning on the axis, or the rotation, creates day and night. That means when, when Earth is located here, half of Earth will have daylight, and the other half will be dark. So, day and night do the rotation. Revolution is just making one complete trip around something. And when we talk about revolution, for us, we're talking about a year. We're talking about one complete trip around the sun. Uh, the moon also does a revolution. We call it a lunar cycle, and that's revolving around us. But revolution is one complete trip. Now, we talked about Earth's axis. Earth does have a tilt at a 23.5 degree angle. And that, that tilted axis, that 23.5 degree angle, is going to lead to something else. All right, next we need to talk about hemisphere. Hemisphere just being half of the Earth. It's split up by our equator. So above the equator, we have the northern hemisphere, and below the equator, we have the southern hemisphere. All right, so seasons. Seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis, not by its revolution. So because it's got that 23.5 degree tilt, we have the different seasons as the Earth revolves around the sun. The northern hemisphere, if it's experiencing winter, then the southern hemisphere will be experiencing the exact opposite. So it's dictated by the position of the axis in, in relation to the sun. So looking at our summer, the northern hemisphere is pointed toward the sun, so it is getting a lot more sun, direct sunlight, than the southern hemisphere. So because of that amount of sun that we're receiving, the northern hemisphere is going to be in summer. And looking at the opposite, if we look at winter, again, focusing on the northern hemisphere, notice the axis is pointed away from the sun. So all that sun that we were getting in summer, we're not getting as much sun that we're, now that we're in winter. Um, so the northern hemisphere is going to be in winter, and the southern hemisphere, since it's receiving all that sunlight, is going to be in summer. If you need to find autumn and spring, you're going to notice the revolution of the earth around the sun. So coming from summer... Next, we have autumn, then we have winter, and then from winter, we have spring, and then back to summer. All right, so now we need to talk about um, some specific days that happen during the year um, that are important. One in the summer, one in the winter, one in the spring, and one in the fall. So the first one I want to talk about is the equinox. All right, so the equinox is the time when the sun is directly above the equator, where night and day are equal. Um, the way I used to remember that is I look at the word parts. So equi means equal, literally. And then nox, we think about the word nox, I think about like nocturnal, is it that same word part? And that's when animals are active at night. So nox actually means night. So the trick I use for remembering equinox is remembering that the night is equal. Equal to what? Well, it's equal to the day. The day hours are the same amount of hours as the night hours. Well, that happens twice a year. So if we look at it and we think, okay, um, let's look at uh, this one right here. If the northern hemisphere is receiving more sunlight, are they going to have equal night to day? No, you know that in the summer there's that really long day, so it's not going to have equal amount of sunlight and, and nighttime in the summer. Those things happen in the fall or autumn and in spring. And if you think about it, that's when the sunlight is directly hitting the equator. 
okay? It's not getting more light in either hemisphere. It's not getting more light in either hemisphere, then it's just going to be equal day and night. So we call those the equinoxes. And there's a fall equinox, which is sometimes called the autumnal equinox. And then there's a spring equinox, which is sometimes called the vernal equinox. And they happen in March and in September. All right, and so then the other one is the solstice. And that's when the sun is farthest north or south of the equator. Okay, those are the longest and the shortest days of the year. So, you know, there's always that day in the summer where it gets light before 6 o'clock in the morning and it gets dark, you know, not until 9 o'clock. That, that is the summer solstice, and that happens in June. Okay, so let's look at the word parts here. Sol um, is sun. Okay, if you think about, like, solar, like, solar uh, energy is energy we get from the sun. Okay, and then this one right here, stis, or sometimes... Stit is a word part that we don't use very often, and it literally means to stand still. Okay, so the way I think about this is the sun is standing in an area or staying over an area longer, or in that case, if it's longer in one hemisphere, then it's going to be shorter in another hemisphere. So if we go back and we look at the map, or the, not the map, but the diagram, we look here and we see, okay, the sunlight here is hitting... A whole lot more sunlight, like Ms. Brown said, in the southern hemisphere. So that's going to be the day in December in the northern hemisphere where we get the least amount of sunlight. And that happens in December. That's that day where it doesn't the sun doesn't rise until like 7:30 in the morning, and it's setting by five o'clock. Okay. So as we um, we have our summer solstice, our our winter solstice here for us in the northern hemisphere, and then we have our summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere. Okay, so we have the shortest day here, and as our, we go this way around the sun, our days progressively get a little bit longer and a little bit longer. We have our equinox here, then our days get a little bit longer and a little bit longer, and we have our longest day of the year, the summer solstice, and then our days start getting shorter as we go this way, taking us to the autumnal equinox, and they continue to get shorter until we get to our winter solstice. Okay, so again, the equinox and the solstice, they only happen twice a year each, two equinoxes, and two solstices. All right, so that's all the information that we need right now for standard 6.6 .6 and 6.3. If you have any questions about it, feel free to look at your notes, check your vocab packet, or talk to one of your teachers before the quizzes happen. Thank you.